Heide, I'm Adam Kibas, and this is my novel, the video. Inish is incensed. She's strutting mad towards her home complex. She's out of her wits. Someone has stolen her identity. And it took her a while to find out who, where, what is going on. She knew she was dumbstruck. How is it even possible? She was always precautious. She heed all these advices. Hekas did not get to her. And yet it happened. Someone stole Inesh's identity. She of course immediately went to the police. These things they have to be reported. Who knows where this might all lead to? Criminal syndicates. Well, whatever it is, someone has to make an end to it. She has not heard anything about identity theft in special, but she, she somehow feels nothing good can come out of it. This is a dangerous game. And she went straight to the police, reported it. Someone has stolen her, her identity. She got a park ticket. She's not going to pay for it. She doesn't even drive this car. Someone parked somewhere. Her identity gave her address. And then she received a park ticket for not having paid for it, for parking unlawfully. How is this even possible? What is happening? She's been, she has been a victim of a criminal organization. And Ines' blood is boiling. She's out of her wits. How can it all happen to her? Maybe think that because she is a single mom that they can corner her, that they can intimidate her. Well, Inesh will prove them wrong. Inesh will show them that she is not one of these women who can be caved, who can be put into a corner. No, she went straight to the police, but it was weird. It was weird to talk to someone. The moment she went in there and said to one of those assistants what she was up to, that she want to report identity theft. She was being scrutinized all over. The woman looked her straight in her eyes and was thoughtful. Ines was struck and stalled for a moment. What should she make of it? Why was this woman looking at her? Why was she staring at her? Did she she somehow remind her of someone. Well, well, maybe she's a racist. Ines, she's Mexican. For some white folks, Mexicans, they all look like the same. Or oh, maybe she thought that Ines is a criminal and that this is a great criminal shame and now she brings in the police. Who knows? Now, this entire mess become very uncomfortable for Ines. There is only one Ines Santiago and the world should know with her face on it, with her address and with her boy Juan. She had to go through a lot and the last thing she needs is someone ruining her life because this is how, how this all feels like someone is ruining her life. This has to be something that is mean. This has to be someone. Someone who has no heart whatsoever. Someone who probably feels joy in destroying other people's lives. Inish imagines a hacker, some, some white man, some American, who probably targets Latinos, a racist, who thinks that Latinos would owe him something, who thinks that he should, he should ensure that Latinos pay back their due, whatever their due might mean. No. Now, even the thought makes Ines infuriated. 
that someone like this would do this to a pretender police station. The moment she walked in, the woman sang a sort of stall. And then she met someone. Officer Garcia, Mexican, of course. Where you, you always have this feeling that whenever you go someone, somewhere, talk to someone, then white folks somehow think that it is not their, their responsibility to talk to you. No, they need another Latino who talks to you as if we cannot talk between each other. As if those different ethnicities, races, cannot talk interracially. As if someone would need to be from the same from the same social background. Maybe they, maybe they thought that English does not speak proper English while well, she speaks American English fluently with a significant American accent. She's no bump. She's not someone who just who just lives along. She has a plan, she has a life, she has someone to care for. What do these know? Officer Garcias came to her, asked her what she was up to. Another Mexican. She uh, she didn't want to, to get involved to it. She doesn't want it. She didn't want it to be too much attached and talk about Mexico. This is probably what these white folks imagine what Mexicans do. They meet and talk about their home, where they come from. Inesh indeed was curious where Officer Garcia was from, whether she can share experience with him, which part of Mexico, well it does matter. For white folks Mexico is just one country, but for Mexican it depends where you come from, from the east or from the west, from southern California or from the Caribbean. There is a whole difference to it. Why if you are from Mexico City? The body Inish didn't want to talk about Mexico. She had to remind herself what this was all about, that this was about her life and that someone is obviously hurting her. Someone has stolen her identity and she has proof of it. She's proof and she wants the police to do something. Inish showed Officer Garcia the parking ticket. She told him, that's not mine. I haven't parked there. I haven't got a car and I suspected someone has stolen my identity. Officer Garcia again was thoughtful. Did something happen? Did something happen that Inish did not know about? Another attack? What was this all about? Another scandal? Well, Inish felt guilty because she does not read read the news paper quite often. She is not in touch with the latest news. She doesn't know anything about politics. Only a little. Only those skirmishes on, on American and Mexican TV. Most of the time Inish watches Mexican soap or p- p- Paris. She has no sense for politics. All seems to be boring. All seems to be far away, detached, non-personal. Inish lives on a, a personal footing on the life. Life that is close, understandable, that gives her meaning. This is who Inish is. Personal. So, what was Officer Garcia up to? Inish at f- first didn't quite grasp, but he was thoughtful, as if he was troubled by something. Then after a while he spoke, well, probably there could be a misunderstanding. Well, obviously Inish wanted to play out, but she held back at least. 
she didn't want anyone to think that this, that she would not know how to behave herself, that she's well aware how someone ought to behave, that Mexicans and Americans, that there, that there are no huge differences because she felt the eyes of Americans, of those white folks on her parents what they might say and that she wanted to be cautious she didn't want to give them ammunition so that they, so that they can look down on Mexicans so that they say yeah, well Mexican women look at them they are in in solent they are indignant they don't know how to act no, she was well educated and this entire mess Inesh hoped would solve itself in the end but uh, but she wanted to, to keep calm no police officer should be repelled she don't want to, she didn't want to be the person who had been hated and then those police officers officer Garcia and all officer Smith Inesh didn't know those white folks name actually for a fact she didn't have any non-Mexican friends and yet she assumed that all of them all non-Mexicans they somehow are named the same Smith Jones Johnson all the same living in all the same little boxes boring and their life must be miserable because they can do nothing but hate foreigners, hate Mexicans. What did Mexicans do to you? No, they only wait for a moment, for an opportunity to strike at you. So you have to be careful. And Inish didn't want anyone of them now investigating her case and then finding any justification talking behind her back, well, it's not worth it, who cares? Probably they say to her, this is what she feared, that someone would ever tell her, well, you Mexicans, you all look the same, well, this could happen. It is hardly possible to differentiate you. This would be insulting. And the last thing Inish wanted to be, be a victim of an insult, especially from a, a policeman here in the police precinct, because she depended on them. This is what she knew exactly. She depended on she depended on the police to solve this issue, to help her to come clean, to help her to protect them. Officer Garcia, after a while, I continued speaking. I'm pretty much sure that these things can be sorted out, that people can talk about it, people. He emphasized people and he was so calm. He was calm as if he would not take Inish seriously. What was it all about? Maybe this person who, uh, who has had assumed her identity, maybe she had already m messed up things. Maybe she was already a known case. Maybe. And all these maybes, what was Ines supposed to do? She didn't know. But one thing was sure. That this had to stop. She did not trust anyone. This is how Ines grew up. In this world, you don't have anyone. In this world, you have to look twice. In this world, Friends are rare, and even if you have friends, you better watch out your back. No one has got your back. This is what Inish always realized very early on. You have to be very careful. This is uh, dangerous. So how sh should she talk to someone? And more and more, Inish felt as if she was not taken seriously. Why should she talk to someone? Because even the thought of having to talk to someone about this, how do you start? What do you tell to someone, to a criminal? Stop being a criminal. Stop using my identity. What have you done? Why me? This is actually what Inish is interested in. Why me?
Do I look like a victim? Am I a victim to you? Do you laugh behind my back? Am I the joke of your click Yes. Imagine that this was a click, some man, some some low life, some scumbags who, who poke fun of her. Inish, son, son, Tiago, we can do with her whatever she want. Whatever we want, but not this time, pal. Inish was sure of it. Now she will end this. She will end this once and for, for all. No one is fooling her. No one is fooling with her life because this is about her. But, but the reaction of Officer Garcia, especially the, the one whom she assumes to be Mexican and who was chosen to talk with her to find common ground because white folks apparently are not willing to talk to Mexicans. Well, who is this guy anyway? Mexican. And now more and more she felt the burden of being a Mexican. Is it, is it not enough what we go through? Even though English did hardly watch any politics she was political at least she always assumed the worst of white folks because she had not any f- any friends of them. friends white friends american friends they hate us all they know is hatred they don't know anything about about life but what they know is hatred is this is this this gruntlement Envy. That's what they are. You can't be uh, around them. You can't be among them. Not, especially not if you are Mexican. You have to watch your back. What was she supposed to do? And then Officer Garcia gave an address. He wrote it down perfectly. An officious handwriting. It is straightforward, beautiful, an address where she was registered under her name. What is happening? And apparently and ap- ap- apparently the police doesn't see fit that they should go there and look for it. No Ine should go there herself somewhere. Somewhere where someone has been using her identity, living under her name. And obviously driving a car, registered, having registered a car, and how Ines f- found out about it. This was this was the most cruel thing. She only found out about about it by choice. Almost it it would have almost happened that she wouldn't have known anything about it at, at all. That she would have been groping in the dark, walking in the dark, while someone out there has assumed had assumed her identity. Now she wanted to move fast and not talk to someone, but somehow she felt a barrier, this clump on her throat, a clamp on her throat, which throttles her as if she cannot speak up, as if she cannot overcome this wall. This is not about Inish being a Mexican, no, this is about her being always in, in society inish somehow she cannot find the right balance in one hand she is extremely infuriated she's raving mad in some occasions even though for some these the issues she's going through or the cause of her, of her madness is not worth any thought but for Inesh, even the small thing, especially when she's undermined, especially when people do not take her seriously, she goes out of her wits. Inesh becomes, becomes then a dangerous woman. No one should play with her. No one should fool her. No, she wants to make sure that everyone treats her equally. But then there, she has another side. Ah, Site which she assumes probably has been influenced by Sobo Paris, her good natured side. They believe in the good of humanity, they believe in love. Well, love is the driving force in her world. She did it, 
dedicated her life to love and yet she never found anything. And this was probably the bitterness of her life. This is the bitterness of her life. No, she didn't find any love whatsoever, but yet she still craves for it. These two sides of Venus, they sometimes came forward. Sometimes at once things explode. But here, but here and there in the front of Officer Garcia, she couldn't bring out any words. She was raving mad. Someone does not take it seriously. Someone thinks he can do with uh, whatever he wants. Uh, this is this is bad because this this conjures up bad memories, bad memories on Juan's father. Now Ines doesn't want to speak out his name. He hates him. He despises him. How he treated her. He's the father of Juan, her Juan, her love, the center of her world. And part of him is in Juan. She immediately noticed it. Some facial features. Even though she tried to suppress these thoughts, Juan, his face, and partially in his voice, resembles his father. This man who, who treated Inish like crap. This man who had no love for Inish, who hated her, and yet give her the son in her life, give her the reason to be. Made her, made her a, a proud mother. Who is he anyway? No, his boy, his, her, her boy. It is her boy. And he carries her heart, he's close to her, her heart. She raised him, raised him in her womb. He, he was close to her heart, to her loving motherly heart. And he absorbed this heart. Ines gave him love, her love. Now the boy is hers. The boy has only super fishy straits of, uh, of his father. No, he's not mean. He loves his mother. He is a very good boy. He's her boy. And Inish sees herself in this boy. And she has to care for this boy. He has to, she has to care for this boy all alone. No. This boy helps her. Juan helps her to keep her calm. To Wait for the end. What is this all about, Inspector? Or whatever it is. Officer Garcia apparently doesn't feel himself destined to go after his duties. Inish is calm. Inish got the address. She, she didn't say anything. She didn't want to make a scene. But she was disappointed. She was out of her wits. How can anyone ever treat her like this? As if she wasn't worth worth being treated equally. Now, now there she is, having to face all this all by, by her own. No, she's not afraid. She's not mad. Because she has to go through life all alone. No, Inesh does not trust anyone. That's why it is for her soothing or relaxing that she does all by herself. If you want to make things right, then you have to do it yourself. You cannot trust anyone. You cannot trust anyone with this. Obviously, criminals have gotten a hold of her and she has to do something about it. Inish looks again at the perfect handwriting. He was supposed to be here. He was supposed to look after it. Maybe there was a misunderstanding. Maybe she should talk about about it, make things clear. But Inish is simply parent. She is over. She is already 
boiling, vengeful. She will tell this person to stop. What do they know in me? What do they know? Inesh imagines a white man. Inesh, Inesh imagines someone who makes fun of her. Someone who probably will laugh at her. And what then? Where will she go then? Obviously the police precinct does not take her seriously. Obviously she cannot do anything about it. Just have to endure it. Just to just to make a peace with it. Is this normal? Should she be complacent? Is this what they want from her? Is this what they demand from her? No way. Inish was never complacent. This already started in school. Everyone knew who Inish was. Because Inish was one of those girls who did not let herself fooled. Now Inish, she could stand up for her. She was a strong woman. She could fight and people feared. And yet Inish was broke. Inish was broke because she gotten to the wrong people. Juan's father, Marco, he fooled her. He played with her. And Inish promised that never again would this happen to her. Never again should anyone ever fool her. And yet it happened. And this broke her. Her self-confidence was broke. She was destroyed. She, she hit rock, rock bottom because she thought that he would really love her. And she even imagined that they one day would have a family, that they would live together, that she would be one of those women who has actually made it. This is what life is all about, or isn't it? She thought to herself to find the right one, to live with him, to find peace in life. But then everything came differently. She was fooled. He laughed at her. He laughed at her behind her back. He had a lot of affairs. And Inish was just one of them. Just one of those many women he got pleasure from. He enjoyed playing with them. He enjoyed having their way with them. And again Inish, she's boiling at the thought, boiling that she gave this man pleasure so that he could enjoy his life, so that he could do what he did, just don't care, care about other people, even the thought, it makes us sick. No, Inish, she has enough of it. She has enough of those people who take advantage of her, not with her anymore. She will end this. She will stop this. Inish again looks at the handwriting of Officer Garcia, the man she started to hate, to despise. Why has she, why, why does she have to be here and talk with this woman? No. She will end this once and for all and then we will see. Inish looks at the place, this person apparently lives. It is not filthy. It is not something she expected. Well, it is somewhere, somewhere between a suburban home and a decent neighborhood. Well, it is not wealthy. It is not well affluent. However, someone, the person who lives here does well. He probably stole a lot of identity they think she she imagines those Americans they think that they can do with them whatever they want she heard once two Americans speaking they were debating one of them said that Mexicans they owe to American they owe to, owe to American because Americans allow them to be here because Americans give Mexicans the chance to live a decent life because in Mexico no one would live decently 
there was even some jokes where Mexico people would be cannibals because they have nothing to eat because they are so poor they even eat their children and now Americans gave them the chance to live a life in, in decency to not having to eat their children anymore who thinks that way who is that sick whose mind crosses these thoughts now Ines for Ines this is just madness but yet it is in the head of Americans Americans think that way Americans cannot stop of it it is in their mind it is in their DNA some people they are just born mean you can't do anything about it no matter how hard you try no matter how 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 much you endeavor to change their minds they will always be the same Ines is sure about it if some people you cannot talk civil this is for a fact period Ines starts in the home it is an apartment complex apparently this person lives here in high society there are probably others who live here as well May, maybe other criminals white collar criminals they don't have to hustle on the street Inish knows about some Mexicans young boys who have to make end meet on the street selling drugs doing whatever what what a sick world we live in and this is America this is America as well of of course for all Americans for all whites it is all about blacks and Mexicans it is all about foreigners well, they don't know anything they don't know anything about life what do they know Inish arrives at the door she has to ensure and reinsure twice before she knocks before she wants to break this door in her identity probably probably country put it to that her identity made this all possible now Inish thoughts circle around this around the thought how much is he probably paying for rent this looks expensive but yet maybe he gets off cheaper in a shirt in a shirt all these stories about Americans about white Americans that they play pay half half of the rent an ordinary Mexican pays half that they would somehow be well organized that there would be landlords who would only rent to white folks to Americans and she even heard that if in an area white folks live if in an area Americans live that this would have an a positive effect on the community and if Mexicans live then the neighborhood would be crime written so that landlords would prefer would prefer white Americans the thought alone makes in a sick who thinks that way what a sick world and she imagines she imagines what it would be like to live here see her young Juan going to school here maybe the area is secure of course Inish knows that you can never tell this is one building you never know a neighborhood up not before you haven't seen the nooks and crannies of this neighborhood because there are all those folks all those undesirables are hiding there one sees and gets a glimpse of the real neighborhood what is happening real underneath it behind barred doors behind what 
people want to show you and what you should never see in a schnockt Nox. her mind is racing a lot of stuff she wants to tell from she expects it is a boy a white boy who has never worked in his life who has never worked three four jobs like Ines who has never had to struggle full life Ines already hates him she despises him this guy who thinks that he can do this to her and, she, and in her mind in her mind she thinks about Marco his stupid laughter his stupid laughter when he when she told him I thought you loved me and she was struck I thought you loved me and she heard her voice her voice her whiny little voice for the first time it was as if this voice was her voice was someone's as if it was not hers as if this voice which she felt came from the bottom of her heart does not belong to her and the only thing he could do was laugh at her make fun of her she laid her heart onto his feet and he just didn't care he didn't want it he made fun of her he poked fun of her and now she feared it again what if she would be made fun of again she cannot go back in this police police precinct they are not taking her seriously what she, what is she about supposed to do now this thing gets all messy everyone always thinks well in america you get justice in america you only have to walk into a police a precinct tell your grievance and they will listen america would be a law and order country well what do they know what do they know there are parts in america and inish knows them well where you have to be aware aware like you are in mexico like after night you don't leave your home all by yourself and especially as a woman you better watch watch out never enter anywhere anywhere alone never walk without company free for women be always careful be always together this is mexico and this is america you cannot just walk around the street at night in in america it doesn't matter where america is wealth is one of the wealthiest countries in the world it is scary in america it is creepy in in america and english knows this well but white folks they don't know anything at all she knocks again she gets impatient she hears that someone is behind the door spy someone is scrutinizing her probably feared she's about to yell open up but she thinks twice she doesn't want to scare anyone if she starts yelling this person might be scared and what will happen will the police act act on it they did nothing the first time what if they come along and do nothing again it felt so lost inish feels so lost what is she supposed to do now now she feels this rage she's about to get raving mad again sees mark cross stupid face laughing at her and she and her life her feelings how does how she feels doesn't mean anything anymore people just do not take you seriously that's the fact of it inish inhales breathes in tries tries to 
be calm. Maybe she can talk her out of it. Maybe she can talk this thing through, talk this, talk to this man, to this boy who probably maybe doesn't know what he did. Maybe he has no idea what identity theft could mean. Well, Inish doesn't know what it means actually, but she fears that anything criminal would come out of it and that she would have to pay for it. This is what you always do. People rot in prison, rot in prison for things they have not done. And especially here in America, who knows how many identities are being used simul simultaneously. How many people's identities have been robbed and stolen? Well, you, you do not even have to show identity if you want to, if you want to cast a vote. Even the vote alone makes it scary. And what if she could be handcuffed, could be thrown into jail, and well, and she has to prove. She has to, to prove everyone that she is not the person who did this crime, murder, whatever it is. Know that she is the real Enish son, Tiago. The fourth son, Tiago. That's her name, even though she assumes that this is special and it, it belongs to her. She knows very well that in Latin America and around the world there, there are probably millions, millions whose names, whose surnames are Santiago and that there might be a lot of women here in the US and in Mexico who probably even are named Inish. What is special on this name? Nothing after all. Maybe. And if someone looks like her her face is a superb doppelganger well who could then tell who could tell the difference if this person commits a crime and then everyone points at Inish she did it it was all her and given how the police has reacted. Would they act on it at all? Would they help her at all? She doubts that. And again, she has to fight this rage, this helplessness. She cannot help herself. She cannot relieve herself from this. She is struck by it. M. Bethel, that's what it is, crushed. But finally, the door opens, and to Inish's su su surprise, an elderly woman opens the door. She looks nice, a warm-hearted woman, and she immediately reminds Inish of her aunt and all those nice older people. Her face, her feature seems seems to be that of a n nice person and for moments Inish doesn't know what to say to her. Should she yell at her? Yell at her? Should she say something about it? Maybe it is only a co co coincidence. Maybe this is just a cleaning woman and this scary white dude who is actually responsible for all the misery is hiding somewhere behind. And has sent the Mexican cleaning woman out to talk to her. This is what Mexicans love living. White folks, they don't want to face up with other foreigners. They rather, they rather prefer that Mexican and blacks that they sort things out among each other. Every white man seems to have one second, second in 
command whom he can send out to talk with a foreigner, take this issue, clear things out. And where did he get this cleaning woman from? Well, it is morning. Maybe Inish should have waited for the afternoon. Maybe then she would have met this man. Maybe he would have been more, more oblivious. Maybe he wouldn't have expected that someone would confront her. No one can fool with Inish. Inish wants to make this clear, clear at once. And she again feels this rage, this anger. It is her life. And she has to care for someone else at worst. She thinks about Juan. Juan who will eventually be back from school. The, the, the center of her life. She, she has to be careful. She has to take precaution for him. What if something happens to her? And then, God behold, something happens to Juan. She would die. Juan is her life, he is her family. This boy who always is the son and who, who smiles and is blissful whenever he sees his mother, Juan. Now she has to be very careful. She has to be the mother for him. And these, these people here, they don't know anything about, about what it is to be a mother, about what it is to having to care for one's child, having to having to be there for someone. No, they they can only laugh, they can only make fun of others, they can only shy away for, from from res, res, responsibility like Marco did. Inesh regains her resolve. She shows her the, the parking ticket. This nice woman, she assumes that this white boy who is responsible for it, this American is probably listening. She speaks out. She tries to sound resolute. I came here because I got a parking ticket for wrong parking and someone has stolen my identity. She tries to be calm. Someone has stolen my identity and I have traced it back to here. The woman is thoughtful. Ina, she is not sure whether she understood. She doesn't want to speak Mexican because she wants this white guy behind, inside the home here. I have a son, she continues. I have a little boy. I am a, I'm a single mom and I have to care for my child. She wants to raise compassion. She wants this white boy who is inside, who is not man enough to face her, but obviously sends out the cleaning woman. She wants him to hear that she bears responsibility for someone else and that these issues, that they are serious, that this is not just a collateral, that this person whose identity he has stolen has feelings. Is a real human being visible? Visible and in front of him. The woman looks at the parking ticket. For a moment she is not sure what to say. Well, what to tell. She looks at Inish. Thought fully. I don't know. She can bring out feebly. And this makes her even mad. Again, she feels this rage. Well, I know. She starts yelling, I know. Inish is now raving mad. I know that this happened here. I have 
traced back the address and I will go to the police. She emphasizes the last sentence. Of course she knows it. It would be probably a futile attempt, but then she will go to a white man, not to a, a Mexican police officer more anymore. She will tell it straight to the white man and who knows, maybe she will write something in the internet. She will publish all this stuff. If this doesn't stop, no, she will not let herself fool in this way. She wants this to stop. I know and I will go to the police. I will re report this. And at once the woman got scared get scared. No, no, please, no, police, everything is fine. The woman looks again on the sheet, on the parking bill. She looks her at how much money she owes to Inish and she goes inside. Inish is dumbstruck for a moment. What happened now? She's scared. Maybe she gets herself a weapon or whatever. But yet she looks nice. She looks thoughtful. And then Ine, she's not sure what her facial expression and, and her excitement meant because she still thinks that behind the door there is a white man, a white dude who is probably the one responsible for it. So why does it bother the cleaning woman what happens to him if she would be on, in her place and would have to talk on behalf of a white dude who who deceives Mexicans she wouldn't care she would probably would have to make an attempt because this white dude would pay her but this would be all she would not get excited or she would not get worried or whatever and uh, after a short while, the woman reappears. Inesh sees that she is really under stress. She's struggling and she holds a hundred dollar bill in her hand. Here, here, I will pay, she says. Inesh did not expect it then. She looks at the money and the, and the, not the woman. And she then says, I don't want your money. I want you to stop. You're using my identity. Inish doesn't know with whom she means you. Because it is obvious that Inish Santiago is a female name and she hasn't thought about it. What would a white boy do with a female Mexican? Can name. No, more and more it dawns on her. Maybe something different is going on. This issue becomes more and more fishy. Inish tries to be civil, but yet she is incensed and infuriated. This has to stop. Stop once and for all. I don't want anyone using my identity. I have a little boy. And she sees that the woman is struggling, fighting her tears. This nice woman, this warm-hearted woman who, who reminds her of a aunt she has in Mexico, who was always nice to her. This woman seems to be devastated please she begs please no police we can talk i have more money no issue no police i don't want your money and i will tell you this the last time i don't want your money i want you to stop using my identity or i will call the Police, this is a courtesy call. 
Inesh feels stupid. Again, she gets reminded of the reaction of Officer Garcia. Maybe Officer Garcia knew. This woman knew whose identity, who was the perpetrator, who stole her identity. Maybe he wanted Inesh to talk with her in person. Find out what a nice person she is. Whoever she is, Inesh doesn't care anymore. This is about real life. It may be or may not be that she's nice. It may be that she might make good candy and that someone may, may be able to talk with her. But this is about Inesh's life. And those white Americans, those white folks, they do not show any mercy. They don't care. And if they want to, they will be her. And she will be separated from her Juan. Juan was born in America. Juan won't be deported. But Ines, she was born in Mexico. She will be deported if something goes wrong. Ines is sure about it. She's scared of it. And the last thing she wants is being separated, having to live that way. Her small world, this is all she has. She has not much in her world. She is the burned woman. Her life was destroyed. She deserves to be left alone. She deserves to have a life with her son, with her son Juan, after what she went through, after the struggle she went through, after what she have experienced. Now the tears of this, of this nice woman no, they can't help her. It is not about being cold-hearted. It is about being careful. Here in America, you have to be careful. You have to watch out of yourself because no one else, else does. Look at the police. They did not act. They sent her along their way. Yeah, well, she, she should talk about it. There is, no, there is nothing one can Talk about it. Identity theft is a criminal offense. You go to jail for this and no one shows you mercy. No one would imagine. Inesh imagines if she would need help, no one would help her. They would send her away. No, she doesn't care about this woman. And she repeats it again. I want this to stop. Now she's calm. She's gathered her strength because apparently what she said had an effect on this woman. The woman was is weeping now. She should stop. But at the very moment Inesh feels uncomfortable this nice woman this nice woman who may or may not struggle through life is breaking down and Inesh feels the urge to soothe her feels the urge to hold her on to be connected with her family in Mexico with the past she left behind and the new life she started and left her desolate, but she again is being reminded of her resolve. Therefore she turns around and struts away. She made her point at least Inish thinks that way. Well.